recording. And I would like for everyone to welcome Leslie Workman. She is the Pike County Family and Consumer Sciences agent. And she is going to be our guest speaker this morning and show us how to make a homemade pie crust. So welcome, Leslie. Good morning, everybody. It's a little late for from Kentucky, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being with us today, Leslie. We're excited to learn from you. Well, you're welcome. Um, hopefully not like you all. Um, I really started on my pie making journey um, because I made the world's worst pie crust. Um, as a, and as a family and consumer sciences professional, um, I was really embarrassed by that. <laughs> so I really set out on a mission um, to improve that. Um, and I went to a workshop um, that was sponsored by a professional company and I learned so many things um, that I thought I have to, I just have to pass this on to everybody. Um, you'll be surprised at how um, simple pie crusts are to make. You may not get it right on the first attempt, but I want to encourage you to just try it. The more you try it, the better you'll get. Um, I, I will also tell you if you have strong hands, um, it will probably take you a little longer. The weaker you are, the better your pie crust will tend to be. Um, I tease my daughter. She's got the weakest, limpest hands of anybody I've ever met, and she makes the best pie crust of anybody in the family. I have very strong hands, and I really have to be careful. Um, like any other type of pastry, the more you work a pie crust, the tougher it will get. So you really um, kind of got to just be very gentle. Um, I always tell people you want to work quickly and efficiently, but you don't want to work too much in the dough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera down and I'm going to roll out a crust that I made yesterday. And Christy, you'll have to make sure you all can see. You look good. I can, I can see. Okay. So I've taken a two gallon, um, like a Ziploc bag and I cut the end off and then just opened it up along the seams. That lets you see what you're rolling, which is very handy. And I'm going to put just a little bit of flour in here. Always after you've made a crust, <clears throat> instead of, a lot of people will tell you to roll it into a ball. It's much easier to roll something if it's in a disc shape, because if you're putting it in a pie pan, you're rolling it into a flat disc anyway. So it's a whole lot easier if you start from something that's already flat. I'm gonna flour that a little bit. And I'll take my hand and go around flatten it out a little bit more. So this is probably about eight inches and you can see how thin it is before I even put it in here. I have an aunt in Tennessee who can roll a perfectly round pie crust. And we all hate her. <laughs> Mine are never that perfect. What do you think her secret is, Leslie? <laughs> oh, I don't know if she's just really patient. Mm -hmm. or, but somehow she manages to get that done. Now, Leslie, you might, I don't know if you already said this, but how many inches do we want our pie crust to be? Well, it really depends. So <clears throat> like if I'm going to make, I would use the same crust if I were making something like a chicken pot pie, okay. which I'm in a nine by 13 pan, which is a rectangle. Okay. Which is long. So I'm going to need something that's much bigger. Okay. That's right. The pan I'm going to use today, this is a nine inch. Mm -hmm. and probably what most people would consider to be a deep, a deep dish pie pan. You right. can buy some that are, um, you can buy some that from other companies and I'm thinking the ones that are pottery that are much deeper than this. Okay. And you're going to have something that's even larger. Okay. Okay. So it really just depends. Some of the metal ones are not near this deep. Right. You want 
something that's that big. Okay. I love crust, so I think I, I like the, the deeper, the deeper dish. The more uh, deep it is, the more filling you need as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think mine's probably like your size, Leslie, or the one that you just held up. Okay, so I also set this crust out about 30 minutes before we began this morning. Mm -hmm. If you try to roll out a crust that is cold from the refrigerator, it will crack. Leslie, do you recommend making your dough ahead of time like you did today? Absolutely. And when we, um, when I show you actually how to make the crust, we'll talk a little bit about that. What happens is you'll have really wet spots in the dough and you'll also have places that are really, really dry. And what happens in the, when you give it at least 30 minutes or overnight, mm -hmm. it will hydrate itself all throughout the dough and that way you won't have any soggy places. So you want to give it, I don't, I don't think 30 minutes is enough. That's just barely enough time. I always give mine at least a couple of hours. Okay. I like to make my dough one day and use it the next. I like, I like preparing anything that way if I can. Kind of. so, so the crust that you might make today, you could freeze and then set out on Monday or Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, make your pies on Wednesday and have them for Thanksgiving dinner. So any of this can be frozen for months and be perfectly fine. Oh, that's awesome. I know oh. when I make my pumpkin pie puree, you know, you fr I freeze, you know, always have leftover, you know, yeah. and freeze it. Do you freeze it in like two cup quantities? I, I try to just to make it easier from when I'm measuring for myself for another pumpkin pie, but sometimes it might be a little bit more, but I just, if it is a little bit more, it's never messed up my pie. Yeah. <laughs> so by setting my, my pie pan on here, I can tell that this is going to be large enough. I usually will take some sort of vegetable spray and spray the bottom because it makes your, if you've ever tried to get pie out and you get, you try to get that first slice out and it, you wreck it. <laughs> if you spray the bottom, that will solve that problem for you. A lot of people are like, okay, how am I going to get this in here? And you've seen people, they'll roll it. They'll try mm -hmm. everything. Easiest thing in the world. So fold it in half. Quarter it. And then write your pan. And then just unfold it. Leslie, there have been times, actually, like the one time I attempted, um, my crust was really dry and it Cracked. So okay. what, what did I do wrong? Probably. <clears throat> Maybe you didn't have enough liquid. Okay. In it. Another, mis another um, mistake some people will make is when they get to this point, they want to stretch this way to fill in this bend. You always want to push from the top down. What will happen is as the pie bakes, this crust will shrink. So if you're pressing out, it's going to shrink back on itself. So always press from the top down to fill this bend at the bottom. Does that make sense? Yes, that's very okay. helpful. Okay, that's really, really critical. So never, never stretch this once you've put it in the pot pan. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. There are a million ways to flute this crust. If you want to get really jealous, go on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> the new thing seems to be right now, I'm using cookie cutters. There's some really beautiful things you can do with cookie cutters. So now we're going to make crust. Yay. Yay. <laughs> 
now I want pie, like right now. <laughs> yes, I want an apple pie. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. So what's the first thing you do when you uh, get ready to make pie crust? Put flour on pie. your surface. That's that, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I hope or wash your hands and then put flour on the surface. <laughs> first thing I do when I'm ready to make pie crust is I make ice water. Ice mm. water. Make ice water because you need things cold. Oh. So I make ice water before I get any ingredients out. And I usually set it in the refrigerator. So this has been made probably 30 minutes or more. So it's good and cold. You've probably seen on TV, you've seen them grate butter and do all this crazy, they freeze it and grate it. You don't have to do all that. A couple quick things about flour. Use a good standard all-purpose flour. Um, almost anything will work. Some of them, like this particular kind of King Arthur, tells me how much protein is in it. Protein is what we call gluten. The more gluten it has, the better it is for bread. So you want a low gluten flour, okay? But any all-purpose flour will work. Now, Leslie, this is a, so my mom, she's gluten-free. She, she's celiac. So she has to use like a gluten-free flour. Would that work? Would her pie crust turn out? It wouldn't turn out. The whole different recipe. Okay. We'll, we'll tackle that another time. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if you don't, I'm going to encourage you to store your flour in some sort of a container. It's very compact in the bag when it comes from the store and it needs to be aerated. So I always put it in a container and stir it. Christy's given you a, um, a publication on measuring. If you are, if you do a lot of home baking and your things turn out very dry, it may be because you're measuring like this, you're scooping in and either tapping or doing this kind of business. You can get two to three more tablespoons per cup if you are measuring the way. So the way, the correct way to measure is to spoon into the cup, then take a knife and level off just like that. And that's one standard measuring cup. I've been measuring wrong my whole life. <laughs> a lot. That's usually the off. <laughs> moment in any of my baking classes mm -hmm. <clears throat> it really does make a big difference the other thing that can make a difference is the quality of your measuring cup if you don't have a high quality measuring cup i've watched an amazing video on the difference um, in volumes of measurement so if they're a very inexpensive measuring cup maybe not made um, in uh, in our country maybe um, you might consider investing in a really good set. And how, okay. so how can you tell if it's a high quality quality, Usually if it's just more expensive and just, you can tell it's more dirty. Better, like these, mine are stainless. Mm -hmm. I've, had these, I've had these almost 30 years, mm -hmm. the dishwasher probably 5,000 times. Mm -hmm. And I've got a similar set of, um, teaspoons. Yeah, and they're not bent. I've had them forever. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are plastic, if the numbers are worn off, mm -hmm. it's probably not, may not be exact. Yeah. So following the recipe that has been given to you, I've got three cups of flour. It calls for a teaspoon of salt. I'm the world's worst for not measuring. Anybody else not measure? <laughs> A, a little tip, um, something like salt will fit in the well of your hand, mm -hmm. just like that. So I often will just pour into my hand. Mm. If you don't put salt in your pie crust, it'll taste flat. You could get by with a little bit less, but you need, you do need some in there. So I have got all purpose flour and salt in my bowl. The next thing is butter. 
You can use any kind of fat, solid fat that you want. You can use vegetable shortening, you can use lard, you can use butter. There are oil pastries, they're a whole different thing. So don't use margarine? I would not recommend it. Mm -hmm. There are all different qualities of margarine. Mm -hmm. Some are better for baking. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm using my pastry cutter to just cut this into pats. Mm -hmm. And this calls for a cup. So that's two sticks. Mm -hmm. Get this so you all can see it. Normally, when we do this in class, we use um, a, half, a half a stick of butter or a whole stick of butter and a half a cup of shortening. I always tell people in my classes if you're going to all this work, and all this expense, the cost average on it, it's worth it to buy really good quality ingredients mm -hmm. to not have the risk of failure, especially right. like for something like flour. I almost, there's a few, just a few things um, that I don't buy store brand. I buy store brand everything, I buy store brand canned vegetables, I buy store brand bread. I don't buy store brand flour and I don't buy store branded sugar because they're not milled the same as a national brand. And it that risk of failure over a few pennies per cup is not worth all my time and effort. Does that make sense? Definitely. Okay. So how much should I work this? Well, I guess you should work it for quite a while. I think you're not supposed to work it. Aren't you supposed to have the, like, well, never mind. Maybe that's in a topping crumbling. Actually, I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen all sorts of things. What do you find works best? Well, let's talk for a minute about pie crust. What kind of pie crust do you like? D describe to me your perfect pie crust. What I should it like to be almost like, like a little salty and like flaky and smooth. Okay. So flaky. What else? What else about the texture of it? I don't like it like hard. I guess that's kind of weird, but sometimes I've had like, I guess like it seems like an overcooked pie crust maybe or something. That yeah, like the maybe. right amount. Not too, yeah. hard, but not too soft. Yes. Okay. Have you ever had a pie crust that was more like a shortbread cookie? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually you'll find that in a commercially made pie. Mm-hmm. So I think of like the Kearns um, Derby pie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yummy. If you've ever had that, you know how that crust is not flaky. Mm -hmm. It's more of a short, it's more like a shortbread cookie. Right. So what I'm teaching you how to make is more of a flaky crust. Okay. Okay. So I used my pastry blender to cut this butter into very small pieces. I'm using my hands to go back in and I'm kind of smashing them. So if I, sh if I shake the flour out, you can see they're almost like little pieces. You see how small they are? Mm -hmm. So that's what you want? They are, but they're like, these are like little rocks, mm -hmm. like little pea gravel. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm going back in and I'm smashing them. Okay. So they look like that. Okay. Okay. They're thin. Mm -hmm. And I'm using my fingers and my thumbs. Mm -hmm. 
What will happen a lot of times is with that pastry blender, especially if you've got shortening in here and not butter, because butter's harder. Mm -hmm. People will just work and work and work and work with the pastry blender. Mm -hmm. When they do that, they wind up, instead of leaving pieces of butter, they wind up with greasy flour. Okay. Okay. If you do that, you'll, you will wind up with a shortbread crust. Okay. okay. What if you were to, and I know this is not the proper way, but what would happen if you were to melt the butter and then mix it with the flour? So what happens after, after this step, and we're going to, we're going to add our water here just in a second and the crust is formed and it's rolled out. Mm -hmm. it bakes, the water in the crust turns to steam, mm -hmm. the butter and creates layers. Mm -hmm. It's like, almost like a puff pastry. Okay. So if you melt the butter, there's no opportunity for that happen because we don't have any layers. Gotcha. Okay. So now that I've got everything done here, the recipe says six to nine tablespoons of water. I could measure this just like this. Leslie doesn't measure. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour carefully around. If you've never done this before, you might wanna measure. I toss with a fork. I'm not stirring, I'm tossing. Just like salad, okay? We'll do it again. See how the flowers starting to. Mm -hmm. I've never heard the. Um... I think it's really beneficial that you said you use cold water. Oh, as cold as you can get it. Mm -hmm. I've got so much ice in there, I may need a little bit more. And the crust is, was, pro well, your dough was cold since it was in the refrigerator. So I'm, that's another benefit of preparing it ahead of time. Yes said was key. I'm learning a lot today, Leslie. <laughs> so what happens if that butter starts to melt, everything that would become your layers just falls apart and you will not get a crust that you're happy with. So see, I'm still just tossing this around. I'm not, I'm not, this is not anything like a dough of any sort. See how pebbly it looks? So how do I know when I'm done? Does this look like any crust you've ever seen? No. no. Probably. <laughs> so here's how you tell. I'm going to take a handful and I'm going to squeeze it. If it holds together, we're done. See mm. it fall apart? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have enough water in it yet. It will not hold. So down in the bottom, I've got a lot of flour that looks like it has no liquid at all. I'm going to concentrate my water down there. Just a few more tablespoons. We're close, but we're not quite there. Remember we talked about refrigerating the dough? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why, because we've got water in some places and not in others, mm -hmm. you have to refrigerate it. Okay, so let's check this again. All together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to just press this with my hands in the bowl. Any loose scraps I sort of toss on there. By folding it a little bit, you'll get some layers, which is what you want. 
I'm going to fold it and press it a couple of times. You can lay this out on parchment paper and do the same thing. I just don't like to clean up. So I've got pretty much a nice big ball here. I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut mine in half because I know we're going to make pecan pie and I need two crusts. And when I take that apart, can you see the layers? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I go to roll this out, I know that I'm going to have a nice flaky crust mm. and you can see the pieces of butter that are still in there. So I'll form this into a disc. Mm -hmm. And put it in a bag and pop it in the freezer. And that's it. Wow. How long does it go into the freezer for? Just whenever you're res ready to use it? I'll get it out the day before and let it thaw in the refrigerator. And then it'll be ready to roll out the next evening. Wow. About 24 hours to thaw. That is so neat how you could see the flakes in, in the dough. Yes. I think I might be able to make my own pie crust for Thanksgiving this year. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> what I wrote to you and give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. And take a picture if you make it. Yep. See those layers? Oh, that Leslie, already. do you mind to hold that up? I want to take a picture. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Let me see. Let's see, the only question in the chat box was, can you freeze the crust for later? So yes. Yeah. If you're one of those, you know, you can buy, probably Christy, like what you buy, the frozen pre-made crusts mm -hmm. that are like in the aluminum tin. Mm -hmm. You can actually roll them out, put them in a glass pan and freeze them and then pop them out of your glass pan. You can freeze multiples of those, just stack wow. them up. Oh, and then that and way, as much prep as you want. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Because then you could have, uh, that just saves you a whole step. I like how you, so we're talking about Leslie, like when you're forming your pie dough, like in your pan, like I was pushing it the wrong way at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. And like I was, I was doing it wrong because I get my, cheat way is to get like I guess like Pillsbury or Kroger brand or whatever the one that are raw, like the little they come in the two pack the rolls and I always mess mine up because I wasn't pushing what you said down I was pushing like the sides and I used those last week I had company unexpected mm -hmm. and I I roll those uh -huh. like I, I roll them out and then I give them a quick roll with a rolling pin because they're always too small for my pan yes mm -hmm. I always roll those a little bit. Mm -hmm. to get, so, mm -hmm. What is your favorite way to add like decor? Do you like to use the fork and press the sides out? I actually do this. So I take scissors and trim mine to make them even. And then I tuck them under and I, this is maybe weird, but I do this. Oh yeah. That's my, my crimped edge. That is beautiful. Yes. I like that. It's just fast. And that's what I, I mean, I can go around a pie and just like that, but that's mm -hmm. what I've always done. Southern living almost always does pies in the fall and mm -hmm. They have some really beautiful techniques that you can do. <laughs> I'm always um, amazed at the stuff they come up with. Oh yeah, it's really uh, well. And now on social media, you see a lot of like baking art, and mm -hmm. which is really cool. I don't know if I have the patience or the talent for that, but yeah. Well, oh, thank you so much. Do you have any other thing, any other tips that you want to share with us before we wrap up? I just encourage you to try it and I know that you can do it. Aww. And if I get pictures, I will be sure to show, send them to Leslie. For That'll sure. be excited to see. Yes. yes. 
Well, I'm definitely going to try this. So okay. fingers crossed. <laughs> to do it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, um, let's see. I have just a few announcements. So this I'm Friday, off. Okay. Bye, Leslie. Okay, Thank, bye. You. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, let's see. Let me stop this recording.